Welcome back to Underway Drifting and Dreaming. I am Jennifer. My husband Jim and I are on the Great Loop Adventure. And this, at this time, we are sailing down the Illinois River. And by sailing, I mean cruising in our 48-foot trawler, the motor vessel Cetus. We are anchoring for this evening. And coming into anchoring, we heard a lot of Asian carp hitting the side of the boat. So we just got to Anchorage. Jennifer came down in the back. I caught a fish! A huge Asian carp. Oh, don't knock me out. Was in our cockpit. Uh. Ah, there we go. Holy smokes. All right, don't throw my towel over with it. You ready? Are you sure you got a video? Can't we have fish? Uh, I'm gonna clean it. All right. No, turn over. All right. Bye bye. Uh, we had a very calm anchorage. I don't even think the boat moved. Here's our anchor alarm, and I'm just up. Um, it's almost first light, and just taking a peek outside. You can see the two boats in front of us with their anchor lights and there's two boats behind us. It was just the perfect place to anchor. I'm not really sure what's swimming across this little river. Maybe a beaver, muskrat, otter. I'm not sure, but it's going pretty quick. And I'm hearing coyotes out in the distance. To the, the right side of this river cut is a farmer's field. And on the other side is just a small island and in the Illinois River. Here's a Katie Krogan, I believe a 55. It's called Real Something, R-E-E-L. But just a very beautiful boat. It's set up for fishing. That's real r-e-e-l and she is heading out and i do have this fast forwarded that's why she's moving so quickly we wave goodbye to them and we do not see them again they hurry up and head down the river they must have a somewhere they're heading to there are just so many eagles flying around and there's juvenile ones too. Their heads are not white, they're more brown. But this one was just scooping out the side of the river. And there was one on the other side I was watching. But very majestic. It's just the coolest thing to sit and watch the eagles fly. We haven't been seeing too many hawks. There's a lot of um, turkey hawks or vultures, which again, those are beautiful. They're scavengers. Look at those leaves. So we have a tugboat up there on our bow. You can see on our AIS, it's the Deborah Miles. He's uh, 0.9 ahead of us doing 4.1 knots. So I'm kind of seeing what he's doing. He's kind of going cross channel. Um, there's no really where for him to pull off. I'm also using my Army Corps um, survey for depth to see 
if I could, which side I would have water on. But uh, since those guys are kind of running the show up here, I'm going to reach out to him and ask him what he'd like us to do. Deborah Miles, see this. Okay, two whistles, so uh, we'll see you on two. Thank you. All right, so he said see us on two, so he wants us to do a starboard to starboard passage. So two whistles, however, remember it's even number, everything port is even. So if I'm turning to port, that's two whistles. So it'll be a head-on situation, two whistles is a starboard to starboard passage. Now if he said one whistle, I would turn to my right which is an odd number, and it would be a port to port. So um, I've got water, so I'm forecasting. He, if you look at the chart there, there's some shallow waters on the downriver left side of the bank. So that's probably why he's taken favoring the green side of the channel, which is off to our right. So that's why he wants to go over that way. Okay, you can see again, Deborah Miles is here. It's also highlighted in red, meaning it's a, an issue or a target that uh, could be a concern. And we've already talked to them. We've got agreed on a port to port, or I'm sorry, uh, two whistles, uh, start to start passage. And if you look at the front of the barge, it's got a stick um, on the very front barge that they lower down. That's a transducer for a fat owner, so they can see what the depth of water is is the barge um, goes over the water. And this is a fuel barge. If you look, there's a red flag in the center right there. They call it a red flag barge. It means it's a hazardous or a fluid fuel barge. So these are, have some type of black oil, diesel, uh, bunker oil. Um, and they're loaded. You can see there's only a couple feet of uh, uh, freeboard. And then, yeah, the the depth on their barge is showing nine feet, so they've got nine, ten feet of draft, so they've got to really go for the deep water. This is another one of the uh, tugs that has the elevated pilot house. It's on uh, hydraulic uh, rams on tracks, and it'll go up and down so they can get under bridges and then also be up high enough so that they can see the front of the barge. Twin engine, big pressure. You'll see if we come up the steer to the right now, we're clear of them. You'll see our boat starts to wiggle a little bit. So you got to be very careful of any type of prop wash um, that's coming off the back of the of this tug. We'll we'll fill the effects of it down. I mean, there's a couple of them a half mile down the river. We were still moving around because it really just keeps pushing uh, sort of water eddies back and forth. And you can also see it kicks up a lot of mud. There's a lot more darker water. Our mast is back up. We stayed the night at Logsdon Tug Service. We have this huge crane next to us and we're just tied right up to the side of the barge. There's three boats with us and we're gonna be heading out. <clears throat> we have about 25 more minutes before we head down river. We have a 50 mile leg to go today. We're gonna try to get as far as we can to a little diner and stay for two days. It's 39 degrees, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a hat on and it is chilly. We had a few tugs go by and barges last night. And so just very minimal wake. But what a glorious morning here on the Illinois River. We are underway. It's a little chilly outside, 39, 40 degrees. The parents are staying warm inside. I even have a snowflake coffee cup. 
I only have a few coffee cups on the boat. Everything else was packed up. Jim is enjoying his Michigan cup for my sister. Oh, he's showing us in the map where we're at. Down there, Burston, Illinois. I got it, honey. We're off the lake. So it's a little foggy. Jim does have the radar going. So you can still see the contacts on, on the chart plotter. Biggest thing is the AIS, knowing where the tug traffic is. So we have a tug behind us there. Erna Hunting cuts uh, 1.3 behind us, 2.2 knots. We're faster than he is. He's behind us. <clears throat> but we've got uh, much better visibility. And improving this morning fog on the lake or on the river. All right. And then you have the Army Corps engineers, the survey, and this is the best. You can see the little boat there in the middle. Um, the green and the blue are the good water. Yep. I want to stay in the blue, but then the green and the shallowing is it intensifies the color. And this is very accurate. It's updated quite a bit. And I definitely want to use that on any you know, coastal waterways or any rivers. All right. And then you have your pedometer going. Mm -hmm. um, plus yeah. three feet. So we're plus point. three feet? I thought it was that it was plus. Yeah, plus two, two. two and a half to three feet. The bottom of our keel is at three. Oh, okay. And then from the transducer to the water line, it's between two and three feet. All right. And it is, the water temperature says 63. I haven't checked it lately with the thermometer. Usually when I check the starter, the temperature of the starter, when we're starting the engine, I'll swing around and see what the water temperature is. But you can see the buoys out there. Um, so we are just watching for wildlife on the shore, eagles, hawks, turkey buzzards, and then you have that uh, occasional Asian carp that comes fully out of the water and hits the hull. A little, sometimes a little scary, but it's just an amazing trip. The rivers are just another different part of of the loop. You know, first it was coming up Key West and then the ICW, the Intercoastal Waterway along the East Coast, and then we jumped out a little bit in the Atlantic Ocean. The Chesapeake Bay is just gorgeous. And then we hit the Delaware Bay and ran the coast up to New York and the Hudson and the East Rivers were just a just a, another beautiful site, the Hudson River. I would love to be going through the Hudson River right now with all the tree changing, but we're seeing a lot of color here as we're going down the river. And then we jumped on the Erie Canal to the Oswego Canal across Lake Ontario and Trent Severn through Canada, Georgian Bay, North Channel, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, which led us to the Illinois River. So we're almost down the Illinois River and we'll be jumping on the Mississippi here in the next two or three days. Can ask for a better day. Truly beautiful out here. A little bit of fog rising up. Rising up. Raising up. Green light for the Lagrange Lock. Oh, so beautiful! Look at the trees. We saw deer this morning. Oh, that's a new Clyde. He's from Loxton. up north and Olympia is behind us. You can either take their lines or float in the middle. We're going to go ahead and take a line amidship. And I think it's still 
pretty early. It's like 8.30. What time is it, Jim? It's 8.30. All right, I'm going to put the, the phone down and get ready to take a line over. All right, so he handed me a line. I'm just going to hand tend it. Just a double braid line. And I'm just going to keep a, just a turn on it so you can see. Easy peasy. 10 foot drop. And Jim is going to stay inside the cabin where it's nice and warm with the heat on. But it is warming up nicely up here. It's great when you're traveling with a, a buddy or two buddies. We have the Olympia behind us and up north. Olympia had a, a raw water impeller go out. So he has two engines and he's running on one. Liz has been following us while he's been in the engine room working. He's out there on his outdoor helm station. We have the tools needed to pull that impeller. I'm pulling alongside and the guys are just talking away and Liz and I are ready to go ahead and pass off the bag. This is called an underway replenishment or on rep at sea. We're not at sea, we're on the Illinois River. But the guys still do not know that we passed the tools off. They're still chatting to each other about the engine issue and the job is done. We both have our headsets on. She's able to communicate with Mike and I'm able to communicate with Jim. And so he's going to go ahead and keep working on that up north as following behind us. We are all going slow and we're going to um, go ahead and get to the anchorage. He does repair the problem and is able to go back on two engines before we get before we got to the anchorage. We have seen so many eagles. There's eagles up in the trees. There's eagles on the beach. There's they are nesting. They're catching fish. And it's, I sat out on the bow and just watched them. It was just truly amazing to watch the wildlife. I've never seen this many eagles. Maybe you can spot them in the trees also. We have seen so many different types of bridges. This terrain bridge needed a raise for us. And it just, there are so many different bridges, different ages of bridges that it's just amazing along the river. And here it looks like a totally different green color. So Olympia's behind us, up north is behind them, and we are gonna go into anchor very soon for the night. No wind, a little bit of current. Let's take a look straight down. We are over top of the chain. So this is Willow Island. I think we're in somewhere near mile 30, maybe 26. 
maybe 30 was when I was driving a while ago. Not too far from Hardin, Illinois, where we're gonna stop next. And then behind us, we have Olympia and up north. More than 12 hours later and we did not move. We have a little bit of fog on the water, not much. The sun is getting ready to come up. The farmer's fields are just on the other side of the tree. It's really neat, you can hear them out running. I'm not sure if they're harvesting their soybeans or corn. And the Olympia is still there and right behind them is up north. This was a wonderful anchorage on Willow Island. We're gonna head down the river about seven miles to Harding. We arrived at the Riverside Diner, Mel's Diner, and there was only three of us. We tied up and we're gonna head in for lunch and go for a walk around town. Jim gets a haircut and we return and pretty soon the numbers will grow. We walking together. <laughs> what do those birds think of the cat? <laughs> Hello. I petted you really good this morning. Hey, sweetie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I know, my, but I just took a shower. I don't want to pet you all over. I'll become itchy. We're going to keep walking. You walk with us? So boaters always make room for others. They didn't even ask. We started putting the fenders out and they came alongside. Thank you for t taking the time out to watch our great loop adventures down the Illinois River as we're heading to Grafton, Illinois. Most of these boats are all going to go in. As soon as that fog lifts a little bit, we will be on our way.